We are demonstrating a simulation of the exhalation of respiratory droplets from a 7 sigma mannequin connected to two nebulizer units flowing at 30 liters per minute. We are seeking to investigate in a simulation setting simple and effective techniques to reduce airborne contamination of a clinical workspace using handheld suction and the elements of the salad technique. I bring the catheter closer to the patient's mouth. You can see a dramatic decrease in the amount of vapors being released from the patient. And as we advance that even further in the airway, simulating our suction techniques, it's further controlling that vaporized mist from forming and being discharged by the patient. Again, utilizing up both the patient's mouth, we can do our laryngoscopy. As we work our way down our tongue to the upper glottis there, by keeping this catheter from being pinned in the esophagus like we normally do, keeping the hypopharyngeal space, we can continue to control some of that vapor release from being discharged up into the intubator's face. So by pinning that in the hypopharyngeal space, we can get our good visualization for our intubation. Go ahead and pass our tube. So the tube is in, we're going to plate our cup, and now virtually eliminated the mist. All right, the basic salad technique. Uh, so again, especially in pre-hospital environments, about 25% of the patients we encounter in cardiac arrest are going to have a soiled airway. So finding a way to effectively manage those airways and get that quick first pass success on our intubations is even that much more important. So to lead off, a lot of people have seen this before, but to lead off, we're always going to go into the airway with an suction catheter first. Holding the decanto catheter kind of backwards from the traditional uh, ink collar catheters, overhand grips, we have a lot of force and control with it if needed. We're just going to open up the mouth, we're going to lead in with a suction, suction down as far as we can see, working your catheter back and forth. At this point, we can get control of that tongue, pin it up against that mandible, and then we can actually drive that mandible caudally and anteriorly to ease insertion of our laryngoscope. Once your laryngoscope is in the mouth, we can easily suction our way down to the airway. We can visualize the vocal cords, make sure there's no secretions inside the glottic opening. And once it's all clear, we'll just quickly pin that catheter down in the esophagus on the left-hand side of the blade so we can free up the right side of the blade for tube placement. Using the old technique, then we can insert our index finger in the mouth, push our blade and the suction catheter all the way to the left, base of the mouth, left side of the mouth. So we have plenty of room to get our endotracheal tube into the mouth, place it in the airway, and completing our intubation. Now we know that that soil was airway when we started, so we have to assume that some of the uh, aspirate probably made its way down into the trachea. So the first thing we want to do at this stage is suction out our ET tube by inserting our endorheal suction catheter here. I can disconnect our suction from our suction catheter, our rigid suction catheter. And as you can see, there was quite a bit of secretions and emesis inside that ET tube. Once that's clear, we can go ahead and hook up to our oxygen source and begin ventilating the patient either with BVM or through a ventilator device.